Meet Roy and Ruby, the newest members of the William Brown family. Barb and Bill have been ranchers most of their lives. People have this romantic idea of branching, and it can be, but it's also a lot of work. I've got five horses out there. I don't need five horses. I don't have any cows anymore. But I don't know how to quit. <laughs> There's no doubt Bill is still a cowboy at heart, but he no longer rides the range. I would probably still be in ranching, but the cost of being in ranching is just prohibitive nowadays. You work all year long, you might make, if you're lucky, you break even. So Bill and Barb pulled up stakes in Colorado and moved the horses to Tombstone, Arizona. They're still involved in the ranching industry, just in a different way. This just rounds the edges up and gives it a finished look. Bill is a holster maker, but not just any holster maker. I have a hard time making a plain holster with nothing on it. You see all that blank leather there, and it's, you know, you want to put something on it. <laughs> His specialty is carving leather, creating images that tell the story of another time. There was a point where, as we were doing this business and people were coming in, it took me a while to figure out what these people were after because of the B Westerns and the John Wayne and Hopalong and all of those, Gene Autry. These people are trying to recreate in their lives what I grew up with. I have to establish a border on here for the pattern that goes on it. Bill grew up down the road in Bisbee, but decided to establish his business in the town too tough to die. Tombstone is sort of like the mecca for cowboys. I don't think Hollywood would have a Western if it hadn't been for Tombstone because of the gunfight and white herb. You almost expect Wyatt or Doc to walk into this mom and pop shop. The smell of oil and leather hang in the air, like the aroma of fresh brewed coffee. Everything we've ever done, we jump in with both feet and it's either gonna make it or it's not. Plus, I can't work for anybody. I worked for the railroad for five years, and it was a good job, and it was from the day I hired out trying to figure out how not to work there. In the end, it was the hobby he learned as a boy that carried him into his future. Well, I just thought we might make a wage with it, but it's, it's actually been pretty good for us. So, Plus, I've got a guy that works for me that between the two of us would make enough to support us both. So. Finding someone to do leather work at the level Bill required was no easy task. There are only about 50 craftsmen in the country. Back when I was about, oh, I don't know, four or five years old, the main thing on the TV uh, were, the, were the westerns, the, the weekly westerns. Uh, and I was glued to the screen whenever they were on. I didn't care about much of anything else. A young cowboy was born. Apart from my, my good family upbringing, I learned most of my other morals from watching The Lone Ranger and other types of shows like that. Today, Colin Taylor delights tourists with his own rendition of his boyhood hero. And the amazing thing? Well, Colin was a tourist. He was coming over here twice a year coming in my shop and he'd hang around but he never told me that he was a holster maker in England. And while he may have grown up thousands of miles away in County Durham, his heart was in America. He knows more about American history than people who live here. I feel this is where I was meant to be. I'm doing something I do enjoy and, and nothing stops that enjoyment. It just keeps getting better every day. 
After working together for several years, the cowboy and the Brit are silent companions in a backroom workshop filled with their grandfather's tools. This works like a, a small jackhammer. That thing is not down on the leather, but you're bouncing it. Bill and Colin copy patterns of chaps and belts and holsters from old movies and use vintage saddle catalogs as guides. I've got a friend, he's a retired saddle maker. If he gets an old saddle, he tears it completely apart just to see how they built it. And then he'll put them all back together. Well, that's a lot of work, but that's, that's how you figure this stuff out, how you learn it. It's like having an old craftsman from 100 years ago teach you how they did it. Bill doesn't call leather carving an art. He thinks of it as a craft, one that he doesn't plan on giving up anytime soon. It's hard to retire from something that you like doing that really didn't work. Well, a friend of mine that just recently died was 95. He was still working when he died. You know, they found him watching the Western Channel in his chair. <laughs> Bill says he'll be carving till... Oh, probably till they throw dirt in my face. <laughs> you know, why quit? I have all this stuff. <laughs> why indeed? This cowboy at heart will always be at home on the range, as long as he has his wife by his side, stock in the corral, and his grandfather's carving tools in hand. <laughs>